So today we're going to do the handover video on this Bursner Liseo TD690G. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you'll see your fuel cap. Open that up, you've got your Ad Blue, which is just below, and your diesel, which is just above that. Opening up the passenger door, you'll notice that you've got a sticker here that indicates the tyre pressures. And also you can find your bonnet release catch, which is just here. Before we move on to the bonnet, you'll notice this vehicle is fitted with Remis Cab blinds. To operate these, all you need to do is simply pinch the little plastic clip and just like so, pull the blind to. And using the magnetic strip, they will just connect into place. You've got the same along the front as well and obviously on the other side. Now with these, if you just simply lead from the front, uh, from the bottom, so just pull from the bottom, pull back, and they will clip into place correctly. If you pull them from the from the top, um, what can often happen is they can get caught and they can get jammed. So if you just lead them from the bottom and press that in, you'll be good to go. And as a rule of thumb with something in a motorhome, if it feels like it's being forced, you're probably doing something wrong. So just take a minute to just evaluate uh, what you're doing um, and then go from there. Now underneath the bonnet, there's not many things that you need to know. The main things that you need to know is of course, if you're ever going to jump start the vehicle. To jump start the vehicle, you can see that you've got your negative terminal as indicated by the sticker above, just connects onto here. And your positive terminal is just located underneath this cap here. It's a little bit difficult to see, but there's actually a plus sign on there. Flick this cap open and that's where your positive goes onto. Um, as I say, they're the main things that you need to know, but just to point out a couple more things, you can see you've got your engine oil, um, which is just here. Uh, above that, you've got your brake disc fluid. You've then got your engine coolant next to that. And then finally in the corner there, you've got your washer fluid. Coming away from the bonnet and onto the, uh, at the side of the vehicle, you can see that you've got your habitation door. We'll go on to the habitation area uh, shortly. As I say, we'll do the outside first. Uh, along with your electric entrance step, just be sure to pop that away um, before travelling. Now if that is out and you put the ignition on, you'll get a, a, a loud beeping noise just to indicate that that is out. So just ensure that that is in before travelling. Moving on, you can see that in here you've got an external barbecue point. And with that open, all you'll need is you'll need a little bayonet fitting which will connect into a rubber hose, uh, link into your barbecue and you can simply plug it in here and turn this valve to release the gas. Now, of course, you'll need gas in the vehicle for this to operate, but that is where it's done from. Below that as well, um, I'll just open up this locker for you. And as you can see, this locker houses your cassette, uh, which is linked to the toilet. To remove this, all you need to do is pull up on the handle and slide out. Now, before removing, please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. If it is open, You'll go to remove this and it will get jammed and get stuck. If you keep on pulling, that will then force, uh, you'll force it and break the system. So please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed before removing it. Uh, and I'll show you how to close that blade when we're on the inside of the vehicle. Now to empty the cassette, it's dead easy. Once you've pulled it out, simply pull out the funnel and remove the gray cap on the top. And then right at the back, press this orange button in. This will release an internal vacuum on the inside of the cassette and will allow you to empty the entire contents out. Um, if you're rinsing this out, just put a bit of water in here just to swill it about and again, empty that. And then when you're using blue fluid, which will break down the waste that goes into the cassette, Simply remove this cap and on the cap you've got a little measurement where you can put the fluid in, pop the cap back in, slide the funnel back into situ and then you can pick the cassette back up and pop it back in. Um, just one more thing to mention as well, you'll notice that you've got this little valve here, this actually turns, it's like a little switch. Um, this should always stay in this position, there should be no need for you to turn this or move this. This is what makes contact with that blade that I was telling you and allows you to open and close the cassette. So please ensure that this is in this position. If that is off slightly, when you go to pop the cassette back in, it will again get jammed. So ensure that is always in that position, there should be no need for you to touch it. Once you're at this point, all you need to do slide the cassette back in and once this little orange handle is clipped into here you can see it's not going anywhere it's ready for transit 
Moving toward the back, you'll notice there's a little flap here that says TV on here. You can actually wire this up to the TV aerial. They don't come like this from factory, as not many people uh, want to wire this up to the aerial or use a TV outside. What the majority of people will use this for is a socket. Now, as you can see, it is a continental plug, so you will just need an adapter for that to operate. That just connects into there and will allow you to use a three pin plug. But obviously that will only work when you're hooked up to 230 volt electric. In the back, you can see on this model, you've got a fantastic garage. It's a huge space. It's fully heated and insulated. So if you're putting anything wet in here or anything damp rather, um, you'll be absolutely fine and, and good to do so. Um, you've got your bed ladders uh, here. This has got a drop down bed on it along with some ladders um, if you choose to use the infill which is just at the back there to turn the two singles into a big double um, and you can see actually there's some blue fluid in here that was mentioning before you've got an inflation kit in the back of here along with a socket and bear in mind that all your sockets in the vehicle three pin sockets that is will only work when you're plugged into mains electric so just bear that in mind you've got your carpets which are at the back and then your jack which is in here on the side of the vehicle you've got an awning um, which is uh, uh, fitted right to the top. Your awning pole is actually located in the garage and all it needs to do is just connect into there and you can wind the awning out. I'll send you a separate video showing you how that awning operates uh, but it's dead easy and dead simple. Um, I'll send that in a separate video as, as I say it'll be easy for me to, to show you how that operates. It's a little bit difficult on the video as I've only got one hand. Um, now one rule of thumb with the awning, if it is windy just take the awning in. You don't want to be using the, the awning uh, when it's windy because any bit of gust of wind that gets underneath here can potentially rip the awning off, uh, damaging your van and potentially others. So just bear that in mind. If it's a windy day, take it back in. Now, the awning can be used when it's raining, um, but what you do need to bear in mind is on a dry day, you need to ideally get that awning out just to dry it. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to leave the, uh, the awning wet because that will just uh, result in it decaying and rotting and also moulding um, so just bear that in mind so if it is a dry day pull the awning out just to dry it out and air it out along the back of the vehicle you can see you've got your reverse camera which is right at the top there um, which will give you a nice wide angle uh, and then moving round to the van you've got another point for your garage door as you can see and again there's a point for where your heater is which will heat the entire space. Next up, you can see that this vehicle is plugged in currently. Um, so when you're on site, you'll just simply plug in um, with your uh, connector point and that will allow you to have 230 volt into the vehicle. Um, you can see that you've got a little lightning strike above your flat there just to indicate that, that is, well, that's what it's for. And directly next to that, you've got your two fridge vents and this is where the fridge pulls its air from. If it is a hot day, if you can, try and keep this area under shade uh, as you can appreciate this is where the vehicle pulls its air from and it's what is used to cool the fridge uh, if it is a hot day and you've got the sun beating down on this side of the van it's not going to work as well so just bear that in mind um, one thing as well about these vents you can remove these uh, and behind slot um, uh, winter covers in there for when you're storing the van uh, and they just simply pop off and connect uh, and so, sorry slot in behind Next up is your gas locker. Uh, you'll actually notice, before I get onto that, sorry, you've got a little sticker here. Um, this is for your first drain down point, and this is your wastewater drain down point. You can see you've got a rod here. Um, you'll have a little handle, which will be somewhere in the vehicle, which simply slots onto there. All you need to do is turn that valve, and that will empty the entire wastewater tank. Now, as a rule of thumb with your tanks, uh, when you finish using the van, simply drain them down so on site you'll have a big grid that you can drive over, drive over that and, and simply release the water. Once you drain the majority of water out on site, um, you can then leave your tanks open because as, you, as you're travelling home, the vibrations of the road will ensure that all that residual water is out of the tank. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just fresh water, it won't, uh, it won't cause any harm. Um, so, so don't worry about that. And as I say, that goes for all of your drain down points. What I personally recommend, as your wastewater tank is the only thing that's underslung, the other tanks you're not, you, you can leave closed because they're on the inside of the van and they'll only freeze if you freeze when you're using the van. Um, your wastewater, however, as that's underslung, that could potentially run the risk of freezing um, when you're using the vehicle. 
what I personally recommend is simply getting a bucket, placing it underneath and leaving that tank open so all the waste water can go straight through that tank and drop straight into the bucket. Next up is your gas locker. Uh, so in here it'll fit two gas bottles. Uh, you can see that you've got your gas bottle regulator up at the top there. Um, and just like this, you've got a pigtail which will connect onto there, onto the top, and will then feed into your bottles. Um, when you're traveling, please ensure that your bottle is turned off. And you can do that just by turning the valve on top of the bottle. And then when you're stationary and you wanted to use your gas, you can then turn that on. Uh, it's not recommended that you travel with your gas on because, as you can appreciate, if you are involved in a collision, um, it's, it's very dangerous. So just bear that in mind. When you're traveling, that gas is off. And when you're stationary and using the van, that gas can be turned on. Next up, you've got a little vent. It says Truma on here. This is for your boiler. Um, this is, in essence, your chimney. It does get quite hot, this, so don't hang anything on there and just give it a bit of a wide berth. You don't want to be, uh, as I say, near this area. It is quite hot. Um, so that's all that that is. And then next up on this side, you can see you've got your uh, convenience locker. Uh, the great thing with the bursters is they've got something called a convenience locker, i.e. this, um, which includes uh, your drain down points uh, for your fresh water and also your boiler, uh, as well as your fill up points. So filling up the fresh water tank, you can see as indicated by the sticker, it will take 120 litres of fresh water. To simply Fill that up, remove the blue cap, and using a food grade hose pipe, that can go into the tank and you can fill that fresh water tank up. Once you've done that, the cap goes back on and you're good to move onto your pitch. I recommend using a food grade hose pipe. The reason for that is you don't get any buildup of bacteria into um, the fresh water tank. Um, but one thing on this tank is I personally wouldn't recommend drinking out of it. Uh, I'd take bottled water um, if you are doing so. Um, you're absolutely fine to obviously boil the water and, and, uh, and wash with the water um, but to directly drink out of it I personally recommend uh, using bottled water. Uh, now below that you'll notice that you've got a big red um, <coughs> yeah, valve here, you can actually remove this, this is just a cap and you can remove this to clean the inside of the tank but again if you're not drinking out of it it's not a necessity. Once a year um, is all you really need to to um, you know to clean this uh, as I say you're not directly drinking out of that you can use purifying tablets as well um, in the tank which will just purify and sterilize uh, the tank should you want to now to drain this system down it is dead easy dead simple up at the top you've got a little um, as you can see where my finger is uh, you've got a little black uh, valve so all you need to do simply turn that and that will begin draining the water, as you can see. I'll just shut that for the time being. But if you're draining down the water, you've got two, two options with this. Now you'll notice with the sticker, you've got 120 and then a 20 litre sign here. What this tank will allow you to do, or this drain down point, is it will allow you to drain down the majority of the water to 20 litres. To do that, simply turn that valve, as I said, and you'll, you'll hit like a little, um, you'll hear like a little click and there'll be a little lug that you'll hit. If you uh, turn the valve up to that point, it will drain the entire contents out, um, except from 20 litres. That is designed as a quick drain down point, and it's designed for the manufacturer recommend if you're traveling with water, only travel with 20 litres, due to weight and, uh, and payload, and obviously distribution of the weight. Um, so with that in mind, if you are traveling with water, only travel with 20 litres, and you can do that by simply turning that valve to that lug. Now, if you want to drain the entire thing down, say, for example, you've been on site um, and you're now going back home, all you need to do is simply keep turning that valve past that lug, and then it'll stop, and then you can then drain down the entire 120 litres of water. And as I mentioned, for the, fresh, uh, for the waste water, same goes for the fresh. Just drain that over a big grid on the campsite and then just leave that open for when you're traveling back. Uh, before I move on to your uh, boiler drain down point, one second. So before we move on to your boiler drain down point, one thing I did forget to mention is you have got this overspill cap for when you're filling up the fresh water tank. All you'll need to do, remove that blue um, cap, push that on so then if there's any water, excess water that comes out of the hose pipe for when you filled it, it drains outside of the van thanks to this spill cap instead of on the inside of the vehicle. 
Okie dokie, so I can appreciate it's a little bit difficult to see uh, on the video, I've just put my torch on so you can have a look. Uh, but on in here, on the inside here is where your boiler drain down points are located. So firstly, that little tab on the uh, on, on this side here where my finger is, um, that will drain everything from the boiler beyond, so everything to the taps basically. This here is for your boiler and that is for everything beyond the boiler. To drain that down, all you're going to do is leave it in this position. In the down position, simply flick it down like so. That will dr that will keep the water in uh, and will uh, pressurise the tank. To drain it down, flick that up and then you're good to go. Next to that, you've then got your boiler drain down point. At the moment it is open. You know that because you've got a little blue tab on the side of it that's pinged out. And there's a black nib on the inside of the diamond that has just popped up. To drain this down, uh, sorry, to, to close this rather, simply turn the diamond like so and press the blue tab on the inside of the on the on the side of the uh, of the plastic piece there, and you can see it's just flush. And that will ensure that that system is sealed. Uh, and then, as I say, just make sure that that's flicked down, and then the entire boiler can be used, and you can pull water through. To drain this down turn the diamond like so that blue tab will pop out and that will drain down the boiler now it's really important that you main that you make sure that you drain down your boiler um, all your drain down points in fact but especially the boiler you don't want frozen water in there now then a great thing with the uh, with the boiler on this vehicle is this is fitted with a frost protection valve which is this this reacts to temperature so say for example this is closed and it reaches uh, you know a quite a you know a low temperature this will react to the temperature and automatically trip like so pushing the blue valve on the outside and turning the diamond to drain down now just be aware uh, that sometimes especially if you've not used the vehicle in a while um, that if you go to close this you'll turn that diamond and you go to push this blue button in it may keep pinging out the reason for that, as I say, is it reacts to temperature. And if it's a cold day, or if you've not used the van in a while, um, it won't allow you to push this blue button in um, out of fear that you're going to get frozen water in the system. Now, if that is the case, you need to go on the inside of the vehicle and turn your heating on, not your water heating, your vehicle heating. And thanks to this pipe being located where it is, it will heat this area up. It'll take about 30 minutes, but once it's up to temperature, you can then press that blue button in and you can seal your unit and as I say it's there it's designed as a frost protection valve it's a really good bit of kit it'll just ensure that you don't get any frozen water in that boiler so that concludes the outside of the vehicle we're now going to move on to the inside Right, so we're now on the inside of the vehicle. You can see I've just come through the habitation door. And as you walk in, you're greeted with your control panel for both your heating and the main control panel for the van itself. So firstly, the main control panel. You've got your on and off button here. This is your isolator valve, uh, uh, switch rather, and that will isolate the battery. It turns everything off. You can see you've still got your porch lights on. You can turn them off by simply pushing them buttons just down there. Uh, just pressing that back on you'll then notice above that you've got a little battery sign in the back of what appears to be a motorhome this is for your leisure battery voltage hold that in and you can see that we're pretty much at 100 percent because we are plugged in below that you'll see a little bit difficult there we are there's a battery uh, in the front of a uh, in, in the front of a van and this indicates your vehicle battery level click that you can see we're Again, not far off 100% with that. And these, uh, as I say, for your battery levels. On the other side, you've got the same again, but for your water levels. You've got your fresh water, you've got about 25% in at the moment. And then below that, you've got your wastewater. Click that with nothing in that tank at the moment. Finally, on this panel, we've got one more button here. You can see this is for your pump. Click that on to activate the pump. Now for your pump you need to ensure that before you run this you've got water in the system. If you run the pump without any water you'll of course burn the pump out. So you want to make sure that there's water in the system. So when you're on site you're filled up with water. All you'll need to do is come to your taps including your shower and turn them on and then turn them to hot. What that will do is it'll pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. It'll spurt and splutter and then when it's running steadily, you've primed your system for your hot water. Once you've done that for all your taps, flick it over to cold and do the exact same. And as I say, it will prime the system. Uh, and when it's running steadily, 
you're, you're all primed and you're good to go just bear in mind though when you are running it through the hot water system it's going to take a, a while to to fully purge the system because as you can appreciate it's pulling water through the boiler which holds 10 litres through the system through all the pipe work and then out of the tap so you, you're going to have to just be patient with it it's going to take at least at least five minutes to to fully prime but once you've done that uh, and everything's running steadily on the hot and cold uh, you are good to go you can leave your pump on because on each of your taps you've got something called a micro switch which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it so it's dead easy dead simple to use and um, the only time you need to uh, turn that pump off is like i mentioned when you've not got any water in the system uh, one thing as well is the reason i i, I personally advise you to turn the um, water onto hot first um, is that will ensure that the boiler is fully primed it's got water in that will then allow you when you turn on the heating um, to get that to that get that water heated up as i say that boiler will hold 10 liters of water so as soon as you get on the inside uh, get on your campsite and your primary system if that's the first thing you're doing you turn your heating on it will give the vehicle chance to start heating that water up so then when you have got sorted you've got level and you've got all your bits ready your water should be nice and warm because it'll take about 30 to 40 minutes it isn't hot instant hot water uh, it is going to take a while to pull through and, and heat up so if that's the first thing you do when you're on site by the time you come to turn uh, your hot water it should be nice and warm finally just to point out on this control panel you'll also notice when you're hooked up there's a little light which is in the center um, of this gauge which just indicates that we are plugged in if you're plugged in on the site yet this isn't uh, this isn't being illuminated none of your plugs will work or your three pin plugs or anything 230 volt because um, it's showing that the van isn't accepting the charge so it may be an issue with the van itself or potentially an issue with the campsite it may have tripped so just bear that in mind and look out for that symbol that should always be on when you are plugged in and on the other side as I mentioned you've got your Truma heating system this is a blown air system it gets the temp it gets the vehicle up to temperature really quickly it's actually a very very good system all you need to do is everything below the line is what you want to select the first icon here is your vehicle's temperature so this is for the vehicle heating at the moment we're set to 30 degrees you can of course change that and just change that by moving the dial back and forth click that in to select <laughs> Next up, you've then got your water temperature. So you can either have your water on eco, hot, or boost. Um, please ensure that before selecting this, you've got water through the boiler, hence why I've told you to pull the water through. Um, but you've got a couple of options with that. You've then got your fuel, so this is really important. So this is what you're wanting to fuel the boiler with. So you can run it off EL2, which is two kilowatt electric, EL1, which is one kilowatt electric, a mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric. Mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric. Or finally, just purely gas. So when you're wild camping, you'll of course run it off gas. Um, and then mix one, mix two, EL1 and EL2 are used for when you're on site. Um, now, say for example, nine times out of ten, if you are on site, you'll run it off the EL2. Um, but of course certain sites might not provide you with enough power or if it's especially very cold you're better off running it off either gas or a mixture of gas and electric as that will get it up to temperature the quickest so just bear that in mind uh, it's just worth knowing next up when you fuel you've then got your fan so your, your fan speed so you can either have it on boost high or eco now these options for boost you've got the same again for your water put it on boost um, will allow you to concentrate uh, on which element you want the boiler to, to heat first so if you want the vehicle heating um, to be um, to be concentrated and to get up to temperature the quickest go on to your fan and select boost and as I say that will really concentrate on heating the, the vehicle rather than the water uh, but if you want it vice versa you want to heat the water uh, take priority um, and heat the vehicle later you can again go into that that water temperature and select boost and again that will concentrate on heating the water itself coming back up to the panel are the main things that you need to know underneath you've also got a timer so you can set a timer for when you want the heat to come on 
Uh, you've then got your times, you can change your time into there. And then finally, you've got your settings. The main thing that you need to need, know in here is your reset. There's a couple other things like your language and index and stuff, but the main thing that you need to know is the reset button. Now, you'll you'll need to reset the boiler, um, or the panel rather, um, if you ever get an error code. Now, you'll get an error code, for example, uh, it'll flash on the, uh, on the screen, and that often comes on if you've selected a fuel that you haven't got. So say, for example, um, now I select the heating off to run off gas, because I've not got any gas in the vehicle, I'll get an error code that will pop up on here, uh, and will start flashing. Because the boiler is basically trying to work and operate with a fuel that it's not got. <laughs> It's like, for example, if you were trying to start your car without any fuel in the car, it's not going to start. It's the exact same with this. So if you do that, you'll get an error code. You need to then go into that settings icon, reset it. Um, it will re say reset and then preset and then it, it, the screen will flicker um, and it'll say initializing. Um, uh, it'll flicker and then it will come back on. For a full reset to be done, however, you'll need to wait a full 20 minutes. After about 20 seconds, this, this will appear like it's back on, but you do need to wait a full 20, um, 20 minutes or so uh, to allow the entire system to complete the reset. One final thing as well is please ensure that, say for example, you're running this off EL2, so I'm running this off electric currently. Make sure that when you're moving off site, you turn this off before removing the electric. Because if I remove the power or the fuel from this system, uh, you'll get an error code because of what I've obviously just explained. So just bear that in mind. To turn this off, all you need to do is hold this in, and this will eventually say off, and it'll power down the system. So, just looking back into the lounge, you can see on this model, you've got a drop-down bed. Um, you've got your cupboards, which are just above that which will allow a bit of storage now with your bed please ensure that you don't overload it with weight um, but more importantly please ensure that you don't put a really thick duvet or quilt on the top of this bed and ensure that all your pillows are stored at the front if you leave your quilt on uh, that's quite a thick quilt or your pillows what will happen is when you take the bed up um, that force of it of the quilt and pillows getting stuck underneath here will cause the, the, the fuse for this bed to, to break and to uh, burn um, and to blow. Um, so with that in mind, just ensure that if you're putting a quilt on there, it's relatively thin. Um, and with your pillows there taken off and stuck at the front or stored elsewhere. Um, now, the great thing with this bed is there's not really too much to go wrong. The most that, the, the most that goes wrong is you blow a fuse, as I've discussed, for that reason. Um, your fuses are actually located underneath the passenger seat and they can be accessed by just removing the flap on the front uh, of the seat and uh, and just pulling out them. Um, so if you need to replace the fuse, it can just be done by there. Now, just go to Halfords, I personally recommend, and just get some, uh, some fuses that you require. They are just generic fuses, they're not a specific fuse to motorhomes. Uh, and if you carry them fuses around, if that bed was to ever, um, you know, blow a fuse or trip, uh, you can simply get it done and get it sorted. However, having said that, sometimes uh, it can be an issue with the motor. Uh, if that is the case, you'll need to manually wind down the bed, which can be a bit of a pain. Um, but to do that, the great thing is you'll never be stuck with the bed up or down. It's there and designed as a last resort. So if you are doing that, you can see that you've got your motor, which is just into there. You'll have a bed winder, which will be somewhere in the van. That simply connects into there and you can wind the bed manually up and down should you need to. Now to drop this bed your control panel is up at the top you'll need your key in simply turn that turn it on and you can drop the bed. Before dropping it of course make sure that the area is clear and these seats aren't leaning all the way back which could interfere with the bed um, and you will also need to remove this just from the velcro at the back and then pop that down so then you can drop this bed into its lowest position. Once you're at this stage, simply press the button and as you can see that will bring the bed down. And just like that, your bed is ready to use. Your ladders, as I say, are in the garage. Just clip them onto there and you're good to go.
You have also got netting, which are connect, uh, which is already connected to the bed. They just connect into these plastic pieces here, just to stop anyone from rolling out. If you've got young children as well, it'll uh, be it'll be very handy. Now, as far as storage goes in the front lounge, as I say, you've got storage above on your bed. You've got a little bit underneath this seat as well, which is quite deep. Um, uh, but underneath here, you've no storage. That is where the convenience locker links to. That houses your boiler and also your fresh water tank. There's no access into them because um, all you need to access is that, through that convenience locker. Now, where I'm stood as well, you can see that you've got a double height floor throughout this vehicle. And because of that, it's one great for insulation, but also you can make use of it um, with a bit more storage in the floor. Just simply push this up, pull it up rather, just like so. And that will reveal a little bit of storage, which are great for shoes and stuff like that. And then all you've got to do is press that back into position and you're good to go. It's also a great place to put your wine if you fancy a drink. <laughs> so moving on from the lounge area, uh, we're going into your kitchen now. You can see that you've got a bit of worktop space, which is great. Um, which is just over your sink that just simply swivels we've spoken obviously about your tap and priming that you've got your hobs which are three gas hobs there along with your oven and grill and below and then just below that a little bit of storage but in here is where your rcd breaker is located so the vehicle ever trips you can simply come to this point and check your trip switches you have actually, in fact, got a test button on here. There's a little button in there um, that, say, for example, you can't get any power to the vehicle um, and you can't understand why. If you click that, so if nothing's working in the van, just click that that, that little button there into there. Uh, and if these all trip, you know you're getting power to the vehicle. So there's clearly a fault with your vehicle rather than the campsite. If you do click that and nothing happens to these, you're not getting any power from the campsite or the hookup. So it's either a fault with the cable or a fault with the site itself, it may have tripped. So it's a really good fault finder that um, for if you're not getting any, any electric into the vehicle. You've also got a really good bit of storage here. You can see that I've just uh, lowered the first drawer here uh, and you can see you've got some taps in here. Um, these are what are called isolation taps and they will allow you to isolate certain areas of the van. These are only used for the technicians, you should never need to turn these or move these in any way, these should always stay in this position. Uh, as I say, these are really for designed for when uh, technicians are working on the van and fault finding. And as you can see, that is the remainder of the storage. It's really good, a good bit of area. Uh, you've also got a bit more storage up here um, with your grill pan in it and various bits. Now opposite the kitchen area you can see you've got your bathroom. Uh, we've, as I say we've discussed about priming your system for your shower and also your uh, tap. Um, the main thing that you need to know is how to operate the toilet. Now as I kept on mentioning on the outside of the vehicle um, before removing the cassette you need to ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. The blade that I keep mentioning is this piece of plastic here. Pull that towards you to open it, push it away from you to close. Now when you're using the cassette that needs to be open so all the waste can drop into the cassette and once you've done that there's a blue button just up on the top there. Click that blue button and that will activate your flush. That will flush the system and once you've done that close the blade. You close the blade for two reasons. The main reason being is it stops any odours from escaping from the cassette. But it will also get you into the habit of having that closed. So when you come to remove that cassette um, to empty it, you don't get it jammed and end up in the situation, as I said. One thing to mention as well is up here, as I said, that blue button activates your flush. You will need your pump on for that to operate. Um, and when the cassette is full, you'll get a red light on here to indicate that you need to empty it. Above that, you've got a great bit of storage again, and also a 230 volt socket in here. And you can see, if you wanted to turn this into your shower area, simply press this and pull the concertina like so. Uh, you can see it's not uh, it's not making contact with the magnet and pulling all the way back. That's just because the cassette is swiveled out. To get that back, you just simply swivel the cassette a little bit more and that will allow you to push that flush. But you can see it's a great area, really good bit of um, 
of, of, of a useful space if you are you showering in the vehicle. One final thing before we move on from the bathroom, you'll also notice you've got this little rail which is great for hanging uh, anything wet in there or wet towels which can then just drain down the plug hole in the shower. You'll also notice before we go into the bathroom there, uh, you've got another one of those hatches again so you can put more, more bits um, in there should you need to. Above that, next to the kitchen, you've then got your fridge. This is a Thetford fridge and it's a three-way system. A three-way fridge um, basically means there's three ways to power it. So you can either power it off electric, which is 230 volt, uh, your leisure battery, which is 12 volts, or gas, depending on how you're using the fridge. So to operate this, all you need to do is simply hold this button in. I'm just going to quickly flick this on. There we are. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, to power this, you have a couple of options, 230 volt, 12 volt, or gas. Now, this fridge has a really handy feature. It's got an automatic function. As you can see, that A stands for auto, and that will automatically assign whichever fuel you've got to the fridge. So you can see at the moment we are plugged in, and it's automatically assigned um the fridge to run off 230 volt you could see originally it was set to a gas hence why it was flashing um that shows that it's not going any fuel um you may have heard as well the igniter switch um starting to to kick in there um again because you've not got any fuel it just won't work so if you leave it on a it will automatically assign whichever fuel you have got now just to uh just run through uh, the options as i say when you're when you're uh, on site, uh, you'll need to run it off your 230 volt electric. Uh, when you're traveling, you can then run it off your 12 volt battery. And when you're wild camping, when you're not hooked up to anything, you can run it off your gas. A lot of customers think that they can run this fridge off 12 volt um, power when they are stationary. That isn't the case. Um, this is not a 12 volt fridge or compressor fridge only. Um, it's designed to run off gas when you're wild camping. The reason for that is if this fridge was to run off your leisure battery, it will pull so much power from your leisure battery, uh, you just wouldn't have any left. Um, so it will only allow you to run the fridge off your gas for when you're stationary. The 12 volt will only work when you've got the ignition on, because um, as I say, this vehicle has got a built-in alternator, which will send power from the vehicle battery through the alternator charging the leisure battery which can then feed the fridge now to flick through the options on this click this button to obviously see the gauge if you want to flick through the options simply hold this button until the flashing and then using the option uh, the little arrows here you can flick through but i'll leave it on a uh, once you select that click click the square again and then you can change the temperature again click that and then you're good to go and your fridge is all on and in the fridge You've got plenty of space you've also got your freezer which is up at the top here as well so in the bedroom area uh, you can see that you've got light switches here to turn on and off the lights uh, you've also got oh, you've also got a little bit of storage underneath here for hanging so slide out the rail so you can you've got a bit of hanging space in there and then on the other side you've got some pull out drawers for some more clothes you've got a pull out step in the center here you can pull out like so and let that connect into there as well with a bit of storage so you've got plenty of storage in this vehicle and of course you've got your two single beds as i mentioned on the garage you can in the garage this area does turn into a big uh, double bed um, that infill is in the garage it just slots into here um, if you are using that, of course, you'll need some ladders up to it. But if you want to use it as two singles, you're good to go like this. Finally, in the bedroom area, you can see that you've got a 230 volt, um, a three pin plug there, which will run off your 230 volt should you need it, as well as some storage along the back. Uh, so before we wrap up today's uh, video, uh, you'll also notice on your windows, you've got built in fly screens, along with blackout blinds. Um, and all you'll need to do to empty uh, to open these is simply open and release like so, and then you can pull out and let that, that sit into position. To pull it all the way back, simply pull it up 
and seal the window. Now if you wanted to, you can actually leave these windows on venting, like so, and that will allow a little of airflow to come through. But when you're travelling, please ensure these windows are closed securely. And that goes for all your side windows, as well as your roof lights. So just bear that in mind, you don't want to be travelling um, with them open. Your roof lights, as I say, that's the exact same. To open this, press this big button in and pull this back and that will allow a bit of airflow through. Again, when you're travelling, that needs to be closed. Uh, and again, on these, you've got fly screen and blackout blind as well to black out the entire um, habitation area. And that concludes the handover video on this personal Azale TD690G. I hope you enjoyed.